You're listening to the Option Alpha Podcast from OptionAlpha.com, where we show you how to make smarter trades, learn how the stock market really works, and generate consistent monthly income. Monthly income. Now, your host and head trader at OptionAlpha.com, Kirk Duplessis. Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com working every single week to make this the most popular investing podcast offered online and in iTunes because it's based on one thing and one thing only, and that's helping you make smarter trades. So thank you so much again for tuning in today. I've got a really cool episode today. It's a topic that is talked about a lot, and that is how to find trades. So what we're going to talk about today is basically the best way to find stocks for options tradings with four click or for options trading. I think I said options tradings, but basically it just is going to take four clicks now to find any possible trade that you want to make. Now, before we get into the show, two quick things I want to mention. One, we are now officially in iHeartRadio. So if you have iHeartRadio, if you don't like to listen on whatever device you're listening on, whether it's Google Play or Stitcher or SoundCloud or iTunes, and you want to listen at work because I know a lot of places allow iHeartRadio, we are in iHeartRadio, which is really cool. I think right now there's only about 200 different podcasts in iHeartRadio, so we are at the top of the top to be able to get in there. It took about four weeks for us to get our application approved to even get in there, but it's really cool, so check us out on iHeartRadio. Number two is that we're going to start here in the next couple of shows doing what we are going to call this Ask a Trader or Trader Q&A session. And so what we're going to basically do is we're going to take some of the recordings of people who have started asking questions and submitting questions and answering them live on the podcast. And we'll usually do that towards the end of the show, maybe after the closing bell segment where we go through a show. But if you want to hear your question asked on the podcast live and me answer your question live on the podcast, then all you have to do is head on over to optionalpha.com slash ask. And there's a big red record button in the middle of the screen. You don't need any software software. You can do it on your phone or your computer or whatever. And you just hit that button and you record your question. And I get a voicemail of you asking a question or, you know, giving us a testimonial or whatever you want to do. But it's really, really cool. We've had a lot of people submit them already. We're going to do this on a first come first serve basis. So if you want to get your question answered, then get it in because then we can start scheduling these out over time. And so my thought process in this is one, you know, I wanted to hear from you guys and, you know, get a little bit more interaction in the community. Uh, We started doing this earlier this year with the forums and things like that. But then we're going to also take these and we're going to start doing some Facebook live and some Periscope sessions on these. So again, we're going to start answering questions that you have. So whatever it is, submit it. I'll get a voicemail. I'll hear it. And then we'll play it back if you want it on the show or on Facebook Live or something like that. So as always, just be as discreet as you want or as vague as you want. We just really just ask that you just use your real first name. You don't have to use your last name. You can tell people uh, specific account size or numbers or not or where you're from. It's basically up to you. But we just ask that you use your real first name. So in today's podcast, like I said, we're going to go through kind of how to find the best stocks for options trading. Now, I'll preface this entire show by saying that I think personally, it's incredibly easy to find anything to trade because you can trade options on anything. Now, that doesn't mean that you should trade options on anything that you see, but you can make a trade on any stock at any point as long as you know basically two things. And those two things are where is implied volatility and what is my directional assumption? Now, implied volatility is easy. We can find that. We can figure it out. You can, you know, kind of use your broker platform, whether you're using Thinkorswim or TradeKing or whatever. You can find implied volatility and then dictate if it's relatively high or low. That's easy. The second question is, what is your directional assumption? Now, that's a little bit harder. And that's where a little bit of the creativity and I guess the art form of trading comes in is that you can basically say or look at the stock and use whatever technicals you want or support and resistance or volume analysis. You can do whatever you want, but you just have to make a decision about where you think the stock is going. Is it going maybe up, maybe down, or is it going to be range bound and sideways? But if you know those two things, you can make a trade in any stock that is out there right now. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to be necessarily going to be a great trade because we know that we want to trade things that have really high implied volatility. That's like the cream of the crop. That's, you know, the main way that we generate income and revenue for our portfolio. But you can trade anything out there. 
Now the question always becomes, well, how do we find these trades? Like what, what are the best ones? If I can trade anything, well, what are the best ones? I think it really comes down to a couple things and really two things that I've talked about in particular. Uh, we've also gone over this in some of the video tutorials inside of our courses and tracks on Option Alpha. So you can check that out and we'll have a link in the show notes page to those as well. But I think it really comes down to two things. And those two things are first, you have to scan by implied volatility. So if we know that implied volatility is our edge, we've already proven it. We know the math behind it. The first thing that you should be doing when you look for a trade is first scanning for highest implied volatility setups before anything else. And that's really what I do. So like every day that I come in and load up the platform at Option Alpha, the first thing I do is I go into our watch list and I just scan by high implied volatility. And what that does is that filters out everything that doesn't have high implied volatility. And now I'm just like focusing now on a set uh, set of securities, maybe a handful, you know, depending on where the market is. Right now, there's not too many at the time that we're recording this video. There's not too much volatility in the market, so there's only a handful that come up. But now that really narrows my focus to those securities. So now I don't have to start typing in symbol after symbol after symbol like people used to do in the old days and start looking through chart after chart after chart. Now I've honed in on just high implied volatility securities. So that's the first thing that you should be doing is first scanning by high implied volatility. The second thing that you should do, and this always comes after high implied volatility, is assess your portfolio needs and then pick stocks that fit that directional assumption. So what I'm saying here is that if we know that we can trade uh, first something that has high implied volatility, then we have to decide which direction we're going to trade it. And even if we find stuff that doesn't have high implied volatility, we should also have a good understanding of which direction we should possibly trade that security. And it comes really in a couple of forms. And I think mainly it comes in the form of assessing your portfolio balance at the moment and asking yourself, what does my portfolio need? And so if you ask yourself this question, and we talked about this a lot actually in, I think it was actually in show 55. Uh, we talked about that and also show 51 of the podcast here. We talked about portfolio balance and beta weighting and all this stuff, but it's really a key po uh, key ingredient in being successful here is being able to assess your portfolio needs and say, you know, am I too bearish? Am I too bullish? What type of trade do I need? And that's going to, again, allow you to then scan for those types of directional trades. So like, I'll give you an example. Let's say that your portfolio right now is a little bit too bearish, meaning you've got a lot of bearish positions on and you need more bullish positions in your portfolio. Well, if you know that you need more bullish positions in your portfolio, then you can easily start scanning for bullish setups. Now, whatever that is for you, whether you use technical analysis, you can start scanning for those stocks that are really oversold and could be really good bullish candidates and setups. And so it makes it a lot easier to focus in and hone in on exactly what you need because you don't need any more bearish trades. You need a couple really good bullish trades. Now, if you've already filtered out high implied volatility securities, you could find some high implied volatility stocks that are out there right now. In our case, we'll just like look at SLV because it's just on our watch list right now. SLV has implied volatility rank around the 60th uh, level. So it's really high implied volatility. And now we can directionally look at SLV and say, look, regardless of whether I think SLV is going higher or not, whatever technicals I'm using, I know it's got high implied volatility, therefore I can trade it, and my portfolio needs a bullish position so I can do a put credit spread in SLV, okay? And so it's really easy then, once you know where implied volatility is and what types of needs your portfolio has to get you back to neutral or balance or whatever you want to call it, then it makes it really, really easy to find those types of strategies that fit your portfolio. Now let's say that you didn't have or couldn't find any high implied volatility securities. Well, that still means that you can make a directional play. And so today in the closing bell, we'll go over an example of that with USO because USO has really low implied volatility, but our portfolio needed a bullish trade. So that's why we made a bullish trade in USO because it kind of fit the parameters that we were looking for. So getting back to this kind of four clicks thing, the reason I said that you can do it in four clicks, and this is absolutely a shameless plug for our watch list software because it's ridiculously powerful and it costs you $49 for, or $39, sorry, for lifetime access. That means no reoccurring payments, no whatever, life, it's lifetime access. You get it forever 
and we have to continuously maintain the, da the database. But this is something that people asked for for a long time and we built it into the Option Alpha platform. And so all you have to do, literally four clicks to scan for all the trades you wanna do, is go over to our watch list inside the platform, that's one click, then you can filter out if you want to, and this is really like an additional thing if you wanted to do this, you can filter out and just trade ETFs. So I like to do this often because I don't necessarily want to have a full portfolio of just underlying stocks. I generally like to trade ETFs given the opportunity. So you can filter out in ETFs, then you can add a high IV only filter. And what that's gonna do is it's basically gonna wipe out the watch list except for only the highest implied volatility security. So anything over the 50th IV rank. And then the final fourth click is you can sort the list by any combination of things, whether you want a high percentage change in price on the day, a low percentage change in price. You want to sort by highest implied volatility to lowest implied volatility. You want to sort by stock price. It doesn't really matter. You can then filter and kind of fine tune your adjustment or your scanning right here on the watch list. And so a lot of people have asked us that like, well, why did you do this? Why is it so simple? They want more levers. But at the end of the day, you don't need more things to scan for. You don't need more buttons to push. This really gets at the heart of what you should be doing, which is quickly finding trades, scanning for high implied volatility, and then using whatever technical analysis or market analysis you want to determine directional assumption. So right now, if I go in here and I'll add a screenshot of this so you guys can see this in the show notes page, but if I go in here right now to our watch list and just do those three, those four clicks. So I go to watch list, I filter by ETF, I filter by high implied volatility, and then I rank by high implied volatility first. Right now, only two securities show up that are ETFs with high implied volatility, and that's SLV and FXY. So now, out of all the possible combinations that are out there, I know in four clicks, I should be focusing right here, right now on just these two securities. Now we already have positions in both, so that's good. If I wanted to then expand this out, I could say, okay, I don't care if it's an ETF or not. I just want the highest implied volatility securities first. So when I remove the ETF filter, now I'm left with about 12 different securities that have high implied volatility. Everything from MON and KSS to uh, Zenga, which is ZNGA and Coach and Yelp. So now it's expanded the universe out beyond just implied vol our ETF securities. But again, even here, we just have a handful that we can look at. So now our scanning time is cut dramatically maybe in half or by four because we can focus just in on these securities right now and see what we want to trade. So hopefully that was helpful in just understanding, again, just this aspect of scanning. I don't think that it should be something that you do that takes a lot of time. You should really have a pretty set schedule in how you scan and what you do in your scanning. That's the reason we built this watch list software right into the platform here at Option Alpha, because we see too many people having trouble with this, and it's really not that hard. I think people are overcomplicating it. You're getting into a lot of analysis paralysis on this, and it really just doesn't really serve much of a purpose for you because you end up spending so much time scanning for securities when it's very, very easy to find trades. And what you should be focusing more on is implied volatility and this aspect of keeping your portfolio as balanced and neutral as possible. Now, the closing bell. Find out which stocks we're looking at right now, trades we're making, and hear our game plan moving forward. All right, so in today's closing bell segment, I want to kind of take this another step here. And what we didn't talk about too much in the show today was this idea of technical analysis or figuring out where the market's going to go. Now, there's no hiding that we have published a report called Signals that we released back in January of this year that basically goes through 20 years of back-tested technical analysis data and figures out basically which indicators work well and which indicators don't work well. And so we use that here in our own trading. And the way that I use that, just so you guys know, like exactly how I use these signals is that I have basically three really reliable buy signals and three really reliable sell signals that I use for options trading. And when all three of those are in alignment, meaning all three are showing a buy signal, then I think it's a good opportunity to get into the security and maybe trade it directionally higher or bullish. If I only get two out of the three, then I remain neutral. If I have one out of the three, then my assumption is neutral. If I obviously have not, no buy signals or no sell signals and all the indicator lines are kind of in the middle of the range, obviously we remain